Hello ladies and gentlemen of the internet, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time at my channel, thank you so much for checking it out. We are going to be hooking up and testing out the Fox Alien CL 4x4 today. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up Easel Pro, get it set up and connected to Easel Pro, make sure that it moves, make sure that it does its uh, job going back and forth, left and right, up and down. And then I have a piece of wood right here that we're gonna go ahead and just do a test cut on. This is a stained piece of shiplap board that I had left over. And I think it would be nice because we'll be able to see what I engrave on it for a first test cut because the outside is actually stained you can see there's the light side and then there's the dark side. So that'll be kind of nice. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook up the HSF 800. This is the Fox Alien vacuum system that they offer. We're going to go ahead and hook that up because I actually purchased a longer hose. If you notice the hose right here that's wrapped around and comes down, that hose is only like maybe five or six feet and it is not going to be long enough for this machine. So when this comes all the way to the front, it just isn't going to work. I think that I should be okay with a 10 foot hose. I got this hook right here at Lowe's. They sell this over there by their PVC. What I'm thinking is up here, over here by this light, I'm going to hang this hook. That way that piece of uh, tubing can come down across and then hang inside that hook. Inside one of those boxes right there, I have the tubing that should work for this. I hope I ordered the right thing. Let's go ahead and get this hooked up first because that is the last step. You see, I've got my laptop stand right here, which is pretty awesome. I think it was originally like 50 something, but I got it on Prime Day for like 25 bucks, something along that lines. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in this. Uh, it's just gonna make my job a lot easier. The other thing that I had to do with this machine because of that, you could see right here, this core going down the cable that came with the machine this cable was only like I think let's see four and a half five feet long because it's not even as tall as me so maybe five foot but I what I did was I ordered a 10 foot cable because of where I mount my controller box back there it did not fit technically if you really buy this machine you're gonna have the controller box next to the machine but because of where I have it on the back wall I needed a longer cable the other thing I needed to do to customize my machine was I needed to extend the Z probe. This Z probe was not long enough to reach the controller back here. So what I did was I ended up cutting the wire to the Z probe and then I connected this braided wire. I basically spun it with my drill and you could see it runs all the way around, goes up and then back over here. And I used some heat shrink tubing. I went ahead and connected this. Uh, there's heat shrink tubing connecting these and then there's heat shrink tubing covering both of them. So this now can reach any point of where I need it to go for the machine. That was the only two things that I needed to purchase before I can actually get this machine up and running. Eventually I'm gonna be upgrading my spindle, but for now we're just gonna use the stock standard 400 watt spindle that it comes with. I think that's about it. I will say first, if you are interested, my first video was building the table. The second video was unboxing, building, and kind of getting this thing to where it is right now. And this is video three, which we're just gonna go ahead and hook it up. And we're gonna do a test cut to see how it does and kind of talk about what I had to do to make this work for my situation. Let's go ahead, get this hooked up. And then when we come back, we'll have all of this done and set ready to go. All right, here we go. We got the PowerTech 10 foot. It comes with some adapters and connectors. Yeah, I think we're gonna be all right. Fail. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna need any of these parts right here. I did have to use one of the parts from the actual HFS 800 tubing. Just popped that out and then glued it in with some CA glue and a little bit of uh, accelerator spray. And then the one of the parts that this came with fit perfectly on that. I think when this moves around the gantry at all points, it should be in a good location where it's gonna be able to suck up everything just fine. I need to do something, you saw where that fell. I need to drill a hole in the 
piece of wood that's holding that up. I saw on Pawpaw's workshop, he actually did that. He actually cut a hole where that bucket actually will sit into. That way it doesn't keep falling. So with that being said, let's go ahead to Easel Pro. Go ahead and see if we can go ahead and get this thing hooked up. It shouldn't be too bad. All right, guys. So I already have uh, Easel opened up and I just opened up and you can see right here that I have my 4040 XE machine hooked up. And this is the dimensions of my 4040. Uh, let's go to edit machine. You can see it's an 800 by 400. So let's close this out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this thing to connect, which I already know right away. If you see this green up here, let's hit, um, no, we don't wanna do that. Let's go over here and hit unlock. And already right off the bat, my machine is connected. So I think it's because I already have a Fox Alien hooked up to this. It is ready to go. I'm gonna just go ahead and hit my X and Y and just see if it moves, which you could see right there it does. So technically, I can just leave this connected, but I am not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new machine because I wanna make sure that I don't mess with any of these settings. I don't wanna have to keep going back and forth, changing my 800 by 400 to 1220, 1220 every single time. Uh, I just wanna add a new machine, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and set up a new machine. We're gonna come over here and Let's go to other third party. We're gonna call it, um, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna call it, see Fox Alien. And I don't know if they don't. They don't have this machine in the system yet. So the CL40 4x4 is not in there. So let's just hit other. Um, it is GRBL controlled and it is a 1220 by 1220 working area. And I do have a dust shoe. And let's confirm the settings. Um, the machine is turned on. We're gonna call this a new machine. And I think I already know that this is gonna work, so let's go ahead and just do the X. Yes, that works. Yes, that works. Y axis. Works fine. Works fine. And let's do the Z axis up and down. works fine. So we're going to say yes, yes, yes. And what I did off camera was I did add in the bit. So that is going to be a 1 8 inch down cut bit. And let's go ahead and hit continue. Um, it's an automatic spindle because it's basically connected. So let's save that. And the spindle turns on. So does my back. All right. So we're good there. Hit continue. Uh, we're going to enable homing and we're going to start the homing sequence. I mean, it's as easy as that for this machine to hook up with easel. Pretty excited how that works. All right, so we went ahead and we got the um, homing done. Let's go ahead and see if the Z probe works. This is gonna be the first time that I use this Z probe since I actually did the uh, changing here. So I'm not entirely sure if it's actually gonna work. Hopefully I've spliced my wires up correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up the Z probe. Yes, we're hooked up. Clip is attached. Boop. There we go right there. Okay, so it made contact, we're good, and we are done. So let's hit finish. I guess it's not gonna actually zero in, which is okay. Just wanted to make sure that it was attached. So I know my wiring did good. What I wanna do is, let's go ahead and try this project here. I think that might look kind of cool. You could see right here, uh, we're gonna use this piece of wood in this long direction. We're gonna go ahead and put it down like this and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get this to work. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and I wanna move this out of the way. All right, 
With that being said, let's go ahead and get this uh, piece of wood tape down and hopefully we should have be cutting our very first project with the CL 4x4. Let's do it. All right guys, so I went ahead and I just used the blue tape CA glue, which is actually super glue from Harbor Freight Tools and Activator. And I got this uh, nice piece of wood buckled down with that uh, method, but I, I didn't record it. But if you've never seen that before, uh, most people do this because it really keeps everything nice and tight without having any kind of metal things to break your bit that you can hit. Uh, I really like this method. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and zero the machine in over here to this bottom left-hand corner. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I went ahead and got my piece of wood where I want it, I'm lined up on the bottom left hand corner and I am ready to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a dual bit piece of cut here right now. So basically it's going to do a rough cutting and then it's going to go ahead and do a V carve bit right over here. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and zero in and carve the piece. I'm not too sure. I don't really care about how thick the piece of wood is. I do think it's about 19 millimeters. Uh, I don't worry, not worry too much about uh, the cut settings, although we will go to manual. Let's go ahead and check everything off on manual. I think what I want to do is let's just go ahead and hit two millimeters and see how fast we can get this done because I think we are good to go. I think we're good. I'm going to go with that. I'm just going to leave it at the 3.6 millimeter cut depth, everything as is. So let's go ahead and just carve it. So it's probably gonna do two passes of everything. The first one's gonna be two millimeters and then 1.6 millimeters for the second pass. All right, let's go ahead and carve it. Yep, we're gonna confirm. Yep, the piece is secure. Uh, let's go ahead and do the roughing pass first. You can do a detail pass if we skip over it, but we're gonna do the roughing pass first. Uh, we got the roughing bit already installed. We'll go ahead and put on my dust shoe right there. And with that being said, let's go ahead and hit continue. We got our down cut bit, confirm. We're gonna go ahead and probe it, confirm the position because it's exactly where I want it. The clip is attached. We'll pretend it's attached. Okay. Let's get that out of the way. Now this piece of wood does have a little bow in it, so it's going to be a little bit high, but I'm not too worried about it. Let's go ahead and tap that. Touch plate is there, and let's go ahead and start probing. I like to hold my Z probe while it's probing. You just got to make sure you have your fingers clear. Okay. All right, we're good to go. And I think with that being said, let's go ahead and the Z probe is put away. We're going to set the XY. Spindle is going to be on, it's going to get loud. With that being said, let's go ahead and turn it on with the vacuum. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change out this bit, take that bit out, we'll set that off to the side. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use our V-bit real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one in. Okay, we'll go ahead and just go like that. Doesn't have to be too far up. All right, and we're gonna tighten this up. Now what we'll do is we'll reinstall our dust shoe. We'll get our Z probe back because we're going to reprobe in the same exact location. So we got to hook that up. When you're Z probing, I highly, or when you're using a dual bit, I highly recommend you use a Z probe instead of the paper method because if you're off by just a little bit, you will notice a huge difference. All right, so let's go back over to the computer. Uh, let's go ahead and hit carve again. So let's carve. Everything is the same, but we're gonna change this over to the detail pass. Okay, continue. We're going to be using this V-bit, and the bits are correct. And what we're gonna do is probe, confirm, 
Clip is attached. Let's make some contact. Boom, just like that. Same thing, and let's start probing. And again, like I said, what I like to do is hold that in the same position, just like that. Fingers cleared, clip is off. All right, and now the Z-probe is put away. We're gonna keep the last X, Y, zero location. We don't wanna change any of that. That way it is not, nothing is moved. All right. All right guys, that is it. That is the video, check it out. There is the very first test cut. I am super happy with this. This is something that I would have no problem putting on the wall or giving to somebody, which I am going to do. I'm gonna be actually sending this to Florida to one of my friend YouTubers who is a longtime subscriber, longtime follower. I follow his channel, CTR Adventures. He does some really cool, awesome fishing videos with him and his family. Uh, they do outdoor uh, adventure videos and stuff like that. So he was repairing and fixing up a car and he was cracking me up because he was talking about being a YouTube certified mechanic so we made him this right here I'm gonna go ahead and stain the edges and I might even put a little hanger on the back that way he can hang it on the wall be ready to go so this is going down to Florida to Chris thanks so much for being a longtime subscriber and a good friend I actually message him on messenger and stuff like that so this machine right out of the box absolutely awesome. It took me just maybe an hour or so to put together and you saw how easy it was to connect to the computer. I did have to do some upgrades, adding a longer tube. That way it would reach over here. Check that out. It's going up to that hook and that is going to keep it off of the table and dragging around. Again, I had to do that longer computer cable to connect from the controller to the computer and also extend out my Z probe. But the only reason I had to do that is because of where it's mounted to the back of the wall. If you, if I would have put it over here somewhere totally would not have had to do that but it worked out perfect no problems I am going to be doing a lot of videos with this machine one of the next projects we're gonna be doing a logo we're gonna actually be building some cabinets we're gonna download some Etsy files and do those as well we're gonna do some 3d carves on this so we have a lot of projects coming along on this machine if you're not yet subscribed to the channel go down below hit that red button that way you can get subscribed to my channel hit that bell button get notified of all of my newest videos make sure it is black that way my videos come notified to you thanks again for all my longtime subscribers and my new subscribers creeping up on 20,000 subscribers as of this video so help out the channel and go down below and subscribe until that next video make sure y'all do one thing stay awesome and we'll see you on the next one bye